Hey guys, July 3rd, 2023, 8 to 11 a.m. I have um, gotten some new words and there are eight sections. So I'm just gonna run through them. Number one, freedom. What is freedom? True freedom. I, the son, whoever I set free is free indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone that comes through me soon will receive eternal life. The rulers of this earth rule with power, strength, and armies of the evil one. The evil one is their Lord. They have sworn their allegiance to him. Only those that come to the Father through me will inherit eternal life and true freedom in this life and the one eternal. I wish for you to understand the freedom that you have never known, a life where your leaders rule in love, hope, and peace. In the eternal kingdom, there is no need to request to register every animal or all of your belongings. A tax is not placed on everything you own. If your name is written in the book of the Lamb, you are already identified and made known, and there is no need to continually prove your identity. There is no requirement to receive an injection to live in a place or to, or to travel. There is no annual tax for the property or goods that you own. The Lord's blessings are not to be itemized and numbered for ways to entrap. Imagine a world of true freedom where others invite you to rejoice with them in their bounty. Imagine a life without a seasonal need to make your identification paid and verified. Once you are known, you are known for eternity. The hassles of this world, things that the governments do to try and maintain control will radically increase very soon. Do not fall prey to these traps. Be part of the royal and eternal registry where once allegiance is sworn, the life of true freedom opens up. Freedom begins on this earth with the wisdom and understanding of how to be free within the limits of the world's governments. It begins on this earth with freedom from sin, through prayers, and through self-discipline. All are able to avoid sin. When in this process of growing and becoming like mine, Christ-likeness, you may have slip-ups and fall down and away from what your aim is to reach. Rest assured that the prayers of repentance and the taking of communion to remember my sacrifice for you, you are forgiven and re-motivated to become closer to my nature. That is freedom. The whole world the men without my gospel of freedom are under the power and control of fear from the evil one. They are oppressed and indwelled with his dark demons and they cause uniformity slowly to become more and more evil. Their deceptions cause men to live in their flesh and to be selfish and unloving. This has many consequences, but the worst is the imprisonment a slavery to the evil one, the worst form of the lack of freedom, because without leaving the system of oppression, the end is eternal death and an eternal burning in the lake of fire. Please accept my true freedom. I died on the cross and went to Sheol to be tortured for you. My father allowed me to be the sacrifice for sin for all who would come to me. I was raised from death to life on the third day. Overcoming death and all the powers of sin and darkness, I conquered the evil one. Choose me. My sacrifice can justify you for eternal freedom. Simply believe that I am the son of the living God and that I did live a real life on earth and died a real death and came back to life for your justification. Believe I am the true Messiah that was prophesied to the Israelites, and I did come, and I did fulfill the law. I am the door to grace. Choose me. Publicly declare my name and position as the Messiah and King. Repent of your sins, and let me carry them and wipe them out for you. Be baptized so you can be sanctified by the Holy Spirit and justified legally in heaven's registry 
and given the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit and follow his lead. Continually aim at Christ-likeness. Read my words and all the Holy Spirit convicts you to do. Do them. Never deny my name or my purposes. Always share my gifts of hope to all. And help others to become sanctified. Find the freedom. A freedom found in pure love a freedom that lasts forever, a freedom that cannot be overturned by law or war. Changes are to begin in your realm. They have already begun that you cannot see with your physical eyes. The changes will be shocking and difficult to all, unless they have my freedom and listen and obey the Holy Spirit. Those who have grieved the Holy Spirit and have not heard his voice or continually refuse to listen repent ask the lord to help you hear he is faithful to answer all with a sincere heart evaluate yourself are you in obedience are you reading the word are you hiding sin if you violate the basics of the faith and do not turn over your sins or do not read the words or you deny the holy spirit's voice or you take man's tradition over what scriptures say or you live in the flesh, you will not hear the Holy Spirit's directives. Only the willing and obedient can hear. Christian, this is not a game. Turn your heart over fully so the Holy Spirit can lead. Difficulties are on your immediate horizon. Survival without having the Holy Spirit's lead will be very difficult and bring many sorrows. At any point, if you feel that you have not been in step with the Spirit, stop. Get alone. Pray and ask for forgiveness. Read the Word. Ask the Lord to renew your ability to hear. Multiple times a day, ask for the boundaries to be placed around you to block the evil one's access to you so that you can hear the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my gift. I send Him to help. Those that deny the help and power of the Holy Spirit deny me. Do not deny me before man, because I will deny you before my Father. Only those fully connected to me will be saved. If you have been denying me, stop. Get alone. Repent. Pray with your whole heart. Ask for forgiveness. Take communion. Become fully cleansed and start afresh again. I love you. I know how hard it has been to find truth in your generation. Those with the Holy Spirit have found it. Find me. Find the true me. I bring true freedom. Number two, hear the voice of the Lord. You with recent departure dreams, be sure you have cleansed your hearts. Take communion. Be purified. Your time is imminent. Turn your eyes upward. Your soon translation is imminent. I need to bring you here to train. You'll return to help those that cannot hear the Holy Spirit. You will help those who have been exposed to my son, but have not had the teaching to understand it as fact yet. You will be my witnesses. You will be the first phase of changing hearts. In my love, with my light, with my miracles, with my power, with my authority, with my shelter, you will be a living testimony of my love for all and my desire that none should perish. You will help bring in the harvest. This role comes with a weighty responsibility. You cannot be like the others in your generation. You are called to be set apart and purified. Stay focused in these final moments. I know those without me are becoming more difficult to interact with. Show my patience and love. You are my representatives. Use extreme wisdom and careful expression of biblical behaviors. I will bring back to the minds of those you interact with when you go missing. Fear not. You are surrounded by my mighty angels. They protect you around the clock. Continually pray that their full power can be released on your behalf so they have full access to all the tools and freedoms they need to do their job. The more you pray your boundaries and 
for the release of their full power. This tightens the wall around you in protection and it helps prevent leaks. This is wisdom. Pray. Number three, to the prideful. There are two groups of prideful humans. The first is easy to identify. They are not mine. They pridefully decide they know better and turn away from me, asking themselves to lead their own life. They typically follow false gods or follow the evil one directly. These are the proud and unsaved. Unfortunately, in your generation, there are many who are prideful who wear the name of my son. These prideful are certain of many things they do not actually know, but they have been told by weak pastors or they use their human reason to understand without consulting me. The proud will be brought low as I separate the healthy from the unhealthy within the church. The proud will be filled with sorrow. The proud will have a choice to make, to submit to me, to humble themselves and come to me with a contrite heart, or to rebel and become embittered and stay for the tribulation. The proud, although repeatedly warned with truth, do not see where they are lacking because of their pride. They are certain their slothful approach to Christianity is accurate. They are certain that their view of salvation is accurate. They are positive that they understand my mysteries, but soon shame will be their clothing and tears will be their drink. I will not protect the prideful, not until they repent of their pride and come to me with a contrite heart. I will not use the prideful to do any miracles. The prideful are a sickness within the church. They must be chastised and sorted out from my good faithful workers that love me with their whole heart. Soon the shame of all of the proud is about to be evident. I say repent with your whole heart, come to me fully, but I see the lackadaisical responses. Even when the warnings from the Lord God come, they are sure of themselves. My anger burns hot at this stench. To consider oneself to be equal with the Lord God Almighty? No. I will not send my angels to these, not until they repent of their wickedness and their pride. Number four. Those who are in good standing with me in obedience, you are to be praised. You are to be used as my hands and feet on this earth. You will have my full protections. Do not fear. I move. Be prepared to be used. We will change the world. You are a gift to me. My faithful who love and adore me, these that so long to be with me, but at the same time they fear that they must be careful. Have no fear of judgment. I will keep you separated. It will be miraculous. All will see. Claim me as the source. Do not allow man's logic to try and bring forth ideas as to why you have been spared and the recipient of my blessings. I am the reason and I receive the praise. I will provide for those with true faith. My loves, soon you will come here for the Sabbath rest. Hold on, stay in me. This is the most exciting time of the church. Waves of people will come to me and you are the workers that will help with this. Rejoice. Number five. Hearts are soon to be revealed. I see hearts. No amount of public piety will hide the truths of the heart. Those with pure hearts will be set to work for me as leaders and as ones I work my miracles through. But those with hearts that are not pure will be exposed like a woman with her skirt thrown up. All the world will see who is safe and spared and who has difficulty. The shamed will be exposed. Their nakedness will show the position of their heart. If you are shamed, repent. If you see the shamed, offer my help and encourage their repentance. Never be unkind or proud in their obvious grief. Their shame will be enough consequence. Offer my love and help without judgment. 
I am the one who serves judgment. Man is never to judge another man. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Apply this rule from this day forth. Number six, I am the Lord God Almighty and I speak. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, my holy son, the Messiah of the world. There is no other. Do not hear man's soon lies about a Messiah. This is a falsehood. This is not the Antichrist. Some will say such. He is just preparing the way for the Antichrist. Do not be fooled. Read my word. Read my son's words and know them. Man's soon rising Messiah will be very convincing to those who do not know of my son's words. He will use similar words, but his claims are filled with falsehoods. Do not hear or believe these words. Do not speak his name. Only speak the name of Jesus, the one and only true Messiah. This is the time to stand for your faith and for truth. This is the time to be bold against the crowds and their beliefs. Do not agree with them. Do not consume the king's leaks of news. Do not take part in the soon falsehood. Stay strong and listen to the Holy Spirit for guidance. Stand firm in your spiritual armor. Pray your borders of protection about you and release the full power of the angels to protect you, your family, and your property. It is here. Do not delay. I warn. Soon hearts will be revealed. Number seven. Do you hear it? The trumpet. We blow the trumpet in the heavens to warn of the war. Be prepared. It is coming. Peace is ending. The beginning of sorrows is to begin and has begun already. This is not the tribulation. The tribulation cannot ensue until mine have been removed. The sorrows must occur to sort the wheat from the tares. Those who heed the warning will be protected. Those that do not will be in shame. But simultaneously to mine the ministry of provisions through the sorrows. My true believers will be experiencing my provisions and my miracles. Also my prodigals will be returning. Rejoice, have hope, do not fear, my beloveds. The day of sorting begins. Number eight, I speak and who hears? My sheep hear my voice. Hear me, hear the voice of the Lord. I love you. I want good for you and not harm. Come to me, be humbled before me. Understand the gravity of what is before you. Give me your burdens, lay them down. The cares of this world are temporary. Invest yourself in what is eternal. Make me and my word your highest priority. Shut off the world and see the wonders I can share. Bring me your broken pieces and let me fix them. Bring me your sin and let me forgive them. Bring me your whole heart and let me fill it. Come to me. You are loved with an everlasting love. It hurts me to see you living your life by your own power. I aim to help you, but you must forfeit your life fully to me. Come. Number nine, I come. I come quickly. After the church has been sorted and the hearts have either repented fully of their pride or they have grown in anger and rebellion, I will come and take mine home. Have hope. You will soon see me in the sky. I will call you up and you will come with all of those accounted as mine. The rapture is real. Paul explained it well. You will see this in your time very soon. Keep your eyes fixed on me and keep your hope fixed on the rapture and eternal glory in heaven. Rejoice, I come for you. Hold on, keep your mind on the things eternal. Do not hear the words of man just stay fixed on me, Jesus. That's it.